Number 11. This is actually a very simple one. Um, which of the following is the uh, most characteristic of an end-bearing foundation element? So all of these, the timber piling, the belled caissons, steel micropiles, tapered precast concrete piles, those are all uh, large-scale uh, uh, foundation systems. Actually, micropiles are not necessarily large-scale. Uh, they can be large-scale. Uh, but those are for systems where you're digging, you're going down pretty, pretty deep into the, uh, uh, into the ground. But um, they also act very differently. And the key thing on the question is end-bearing. Uh, timber piling, generally I'm going to find there's going to be a bunch of these that I'm going to put together uh, and they're going to go very, very deep into the ground. So there's my ground plane. I'm going to group them together with like a little concrete pad on the top so they act like one. Um, and I'm going to not really worry, like I'm, when they go down into the bottom, I'm not really trying to get uh, those timber pilings to actually stand on anything. Um, you know, these are, these are essentially telephone poles, like they're, they're long straight trees that have been trimmed down uh, and I push them down into the ground. And just in the same way that if you were, like if you're out walking around uh, in the, you know, like along a beach or something or near some mud uh, and you have a stick in your hand, you stick the stick into the mud and you try to pull it out, sometimes it's hard to pull out. That's the friction that's happening between the stick and the mud. Well, the piles are doing exactly the same thing, just the other way. So I'm not counting on these piles as end bearing, although there are some very specific times when that happens. But most of the time when I'm talking about piles, I'm really talking about friction bearing. So it's just the fact that these things are pushing against the soil uh, in various ways, uh, and it's creating this sort of cloud of, fi of friction around it. And that's how you can actually, there's a technical way to sort of add up that amount of friction, and you can decide how much load you can put on, on those piles, that group of piles, in order to to hold up uh, your section of the building there. Um, so the, the piles are happening through a friction fit, not through um, uh, end bearing. The micro piles are uh, similar. They're kind of a coiled system. Uh, the tapered uh, uh, piles uh, are, uh, can go either way, actually. But the one that really speaks to end bearing is the belled caisson. So in the belled caisson, we've got a situation where we've got our uh, ground plane and we dig down. And as we dig down, we actually literally bell it out down at the bottom. Um, and so we've, uh, that would end up, we dig it out and we'd end up filling it with uh, concrete and rebar. Uh, and the way they do that is they have this auger system that comes down and it has a blade that can fall down and out. And as that auger spins around, it, uh, they, they don't let it fall until it gets to the the level they want, uh, and then you bell it out and make it much bigger down at the bottom. And the whole idea here is that I've got uh, some uh, bedrock down here, and I have really high uh, uh, capacity PSF of the bedrock. Let's say it's, I don't know, make up a number here, 12,000 PSF uh, down there. Uh, this maybe is, let's say, 80 feet down. Um, and all of this soil, which is much uh, less capacity than that, than that bedrock, I'm essentially just going to ignore all of this. This is like building uh, a column on top of the bedrock that goes up through 80 feet of air. Um, now it's kind of handy because it, it's braced because of this soil, but I'm not counting on any of that soil for the structural load. I'm literally just building a column all the way down to this very um, uh, uh, suitable soil of the, of the bedrock. Uh, and because that's what I'm doing and because I want to get as much, I mean, I'm going way down in order to do this, uh, I'm you know, going this 80 feet or 100 feet or 110 feet. Um, I've, I've seen up to 200 feet. I know sometimes these are shorter, like 30 or 25 feet or something. But generally, when you're talking about caissons, you're talking about 50, 80, 100, 110 something feet. So you're going a really long way. Well, I don't want to do that and then have an end bearing thing that's just a few square feet. I want it to get as much of that uh, capacity as possible so I can carry as much load for the building as possible. Um, so the bell, which is this little shape here, uh, is the belled caisson, and that's absolutely uh, would be the answer. So B would be the answer on this one.